Hi, I'm Ted Ryan. I'm an Archives and Heritage Brand Manager for the Ford Motor Company, and you're actually in our archives. We set up a Bronco display with some never-before-seen items, and I want to give you a brief tour and an overview of the Bronco. The Bronco started during World War II when Ford built more than 270,000 Jeeps for the U.S. Army. We took that know-how on 4x4 equipment and turned it into the Bronco beginning in 1963. Before me are some documents that you've never seen before. Ford's official communications were always done on blue sheets of paper. So this one in 1963 established a program codenamed Bronco. And that program from October was approved in February with this memo signed by Lee Iacocca. This is the origins of the Bronco project. Here are some of the alternate names and different variations on what the Bronco could have been called. One of my favorite objects in the entire archives was when I found this 1963 memo that identified the Bronco program as the GOAT, goes over any terrain. That was a groundbreaking moment for me, and I immediately shared that with the design team to make sure that we were on the Bronco DNA. If you follow me over here, now we get to celebrate some of the trims and some of the features and some of the colors of Bronco. I love some of these names, Tidewater Aqua, Ragoon Red. Those are the type of colors that made the Bronco stand out, and when you saw a Bronco in the wild, you knew what you were seeing. This particular one right here is actually called Diamond Blue. Once again, a distinctive name and a distinctive color for the Bronco. So if you follow me over here, we're going to celebrate some of the Bronco racing heritage. So behind me here, you see some of the Baja materials, some of the racing materials. Phil Strop was given a, a pre-production version of the Bronco that he modified, and he actually began to win races. In fact, in 1969, the Bronco became the only four-wheel drive vehicle to win the entire Baja race, a record that still stands today. Over here you see Bronco at work and play. That's the beauty of the Bronco, was it was used by police department, it was used by forest rangers, it was used by people that ran ranches. If you were an off-roader, you could take your Bronco anywhere and do anything with it, which was what the beauty of the Bronco was. It was a life vehicle, a work vehicle, and a play vehicle. Uh, and you can see it was customized pretty quickly for police departments to be able to use in rural areas. If you follow me over here, the Bronco became a pop culture icon. It went away in 1996 when the American public was demanding four-door vehicles and the SUV market was born. There wasn't really a place for a two-door Bronco, but it was immersed in pop culture. And there's a couple distinctive moments. Here you see a series of documents when we converted the Bronco into a Pope mobile in 1979. We modified three Broncos and gave them to the Secret Service, and you can see Pope John Paul II and his Bronco in Yankee Stadium. And who can forget the slow chase with O.J. Simpson? 95 million Americans watched O.J. Simpson cruising down the freeways of Los Angeles, where the Bronco became even more meshed in pop culture. On top of that, the Bronco has appeared in more than 1,200 movies over time. Some classic titles. My personal favorite is Ocean Eleven, but it's been in thousands of movies. And then there's actually a distinct group of Bronco collectors in Iceland. Believe it or not, more Broncos were sold into Iceland than any other country per capita. And it was almost from the very beginning that these Broncos were in the wild. It makes sense. You need the off-road ability and you want the comfort and driving. And there's actually a Broncos of Iceland uh, Instagram page and some of the early ads from Broncos in Iceland. The Bronco's been gone for 25 years and I'm so excited that we're bringing it back. It shares so much of the DNA with the first generation of the Bronco and we're just about to release it into the wild.